Hello and welcome. Uh, my name is Dan Velasquez and I'm a teacher of uh, computer science. What we're going to do today is uh, create a dice simulator. Basically we're trying to create a way to simulate the rolling of a set of dice. In order to do that, we're going to have to first simulate the rolling of a single die. Uh, rolling a single die using Java as our language and our development environment is called NetBeans. And so we're going to use that as, uh, as a way of actually building the program. I'm going to step you through the process of how to first set up the project and then uh, we're going to create our class, uh, the die class, that will allow us to roll random numbers using uh, a die class. So let's start at the beginning. Uh, first we have to create a project. So we go into File and then we say New Project. It's here. And we're just going to create a uh, standard Java application, nothing fancy here. And um, I'm going to call this um, Dice Simulator. And I'm going to put it uh, in, a, in my working folder. Now you have a, perhaps a different working folder, but I'm just going to use my default here. This is where I usually uh, put my projects. So I'm going to give this a try. And you'll see that uh, what NetBeans does is it creates a project for us, creates a, a whole directory structure up here, allows us to uh, get started, and creates a, a main method. Now, every Java program uh, has a, its own main method. Uh, I tend not to like to put a lot of stuff in the main method, usually just uh, testing code. So we're going to leave that one as it is. But we're going to create a, uh, a file here in the same project, and in fact, in the same package. Uh, and we're just going to call it the die class. So I'm going to right click on the package name, Dice Simulator, and then uh, say New, and we're going to create a new Java class. And I tend to just call it what it is. Now, by convention, most Java programmers start their class names with a capital letter, so we're going to do that today. We'll just call it Die. And I'll say Finish. Notice this time it doesn't include the main method. But uh, over here we can see which uh, source file we're in. And now we're just going to add to this uh, dice simulator, adding components uh, to our, our new die class. And the first thing I do when I'm creating a class is I try to decide uh, what my uh, instance variables are going to be to support the, the functionality that I'm going to need. And the one thing I want to be able to do with this die class is I want to be able to roll the die and I want also to be able to get the value of the die after I've rolled it. So I'll need to store that. And then I, I need to also store the number of sides that are on the die. I want to make this a, a general purpose uh, die so that you could have a four-sided die or a six-sided die or even a hundred-sided die if you wanted that. In order to support that functionality, I'm going to have to create some instance variables here. And I tend to put my instance variables at the bottom because they're private. And I usually want to keep those uh, out of the way of all the public stuff up, up on top. So I use the keyword private. Uh, we say int. And we're going to say num sides. This is the number of sides that are going to be on the dice. The next instance variable is um, going to be the value. This will be, when I roll the die, what value actually comes up on the die. And then, anything else that I need to store? I think that's about it. Just those two, those two instance variables. Now that I know what my instance variables are going to be, then I can start creating cons constructors. Now, remember that uh, constructors, one of a constructor's main job is, is to initialize the instance variables of a class into a known sane state. So let's try that. First, I'm going to make a default constructor. I usually make a default constructor I say public, and then the constructor name is the same name as the class name. So I say public die, and this one's not going to take any parameters uh, since it's the default constructor. And then I'm just going to initialize num sides and, and also the value to zero. Uh, you need to have at least some kind of initial value there, so we're going to include that. You always want to do this explicitly because uh, you want people to be able to see what the values are going to be if you call this default constructor. Uh, the one we're normally going to call, though, however, is, is one that provides us with a little bit, in, a little bit more information. 
So here's the second version of the constructor. It's going to um, take the, the number of slides as one of its construction parameters. Here, what we'll say is we'll say num sides, which is our uh, instance variable, and we'll set it equal to sides. We'll start out with the value being zero because we haven't rolled it yet, so we want to give it a value that um, perhaps you can't roll. And then that's our constructor. Now we need the ability to actually roll the die. We're going to add that with a method, public method, public int roll, and that's all you need. And we'll give it a uh, method body. In order to uh, roll a die, you need to be able to generate a random number. And luckily, the Java library comes with a, a random number generator. So we're going to use that to generate our random numbers. The class is called random. And then I'm going to call my variable, the local variable, just call it rand, equals new random. A little bit redundant, but you'll note that it complains. It says, well, I don't know what random is. Well, with NetBeans, if you hover over this little light bulb here and left click on it, it gives you the uh, option to add that import for javautil.random. Right now, we don't have that up at the top of our class, but we can have uh, NetBeans automatically include that. And you see now that import port is there. It says import java.util.random, which is uh, a really nice feature of NetBeans. You don't have to go back and look up the library and try to figure it out. It, it's usually pretty good at guessing about uh, where this class is located. Next, uh, we need to actually set the value of what we're rolling. So we say value equals, and then we use our, our random object, and we say next int, lowercase n, next int. And we give it an upper boundary. Now, what's odd about next int is it um, will give you numbers between 0 and the number you pass in as a parameter. Uh, so we're going to pass in num sides. I realize that will give us, uh, like say if we had a six-sided die, this, if we left the equation like this, would give us the numbers uh, 0 through 5. Uh, with next int, even though we passed in a 6 for perhaps num sides, it's non-inclusive. So what you get is the numbers from 0 to 5. So if you want the numbers from 1 to 6 or 1 to the number of sides, you actually have to add 1 to the result. So that's what I'm doing there. That way you'll, you'll get a number between 1 and 6. Note here when I created the uh, roll method that I had it return an integer. It's just a convenience to say when you roll the dice, it'd be nice for the roll to actually return the value that I roll. There are times in the code where that's quite nice. Instead of having to roll the dice and then having the next line of code to go ask it what it rolled, it'd be nice if the roll method could just return that as its return value. So we're going to say return, we'll say value. And then the compiler stops complaining because we're actually returning a, a number now. Just doing some cleanup here. So far that looks nice. Now we need a couple accessors and mutators, or some people call these get and set functions. Uh, usually that's based on these instance variables. We need to provide a way for the user to go in and get this value after the fact, after it's been rolled. Uh, also, perhaps being able to get and, and or set the number of sides after the uh, die has been created. We could type that in from scratch, creating the accesses and mutators. Or we could have NetBeans do it for us, which is the way I prefer. And so I just say refactor. So I go to the refactor menu in NetBeans. And then I go encapsulate fields. And it takes those instance variables, which are also called instance fields, and say encapsulate fields. We want to be able to get the number of sides, set the number of sides, and also get the value. Now the question is, do we need to be able to set the value 
And the answer is, well, we already have kind of a way to set the value already, and that's just to roll the die, and that will set its new value. We're not going to check the set value box because we already have something that already does something like that. So as soon as I select which get functions and which set functions I want to create, uh, I'd say refactor, and instantly I have a get num sides, I have a set num sides, and I have a get value created. I'm going to move this up just to make it so it matches some of the other videos, because I want to make sure this matches exactly. So if you're a nitpick like I am, um, you can move that method up here. Now I think uh, we have everything we need in this dice class. So just tidying, in, tidying up and getting rid of some blank lines. And it looks like uh, our die class is ready to go. But uh, we haven't really tested it yet. We've done some coding, but and that's only half the process. Now we actually have to test it. So how do you go about testing this die class? Well, we can do that, we can do that in our dice simulator. This is where our main method is. So we're going to remove this one uh, comment saying we have to do something here. And we're actually going to create a die and actually roll it and see what we get. Uh, let's try that. So how do you create a die? We have to call it constructor. So we say die. I usually use the word my die, so I know that's, that's a name I came up with. Equals new uh, die. Remember, a die takes the number of sides. I'm going to assume it's a um, six-sided die, just to be kind of normal, and then a semicolon. So now I've called the constructor. I have this die. I want to roll it. Since roll returns a value, I can just use that directly in my print line statement. So let me try that. I can say system dot out dot print line, and then I can just ask my die. What its value is, or I can just roll it. So I say roll. And my hope is that it will just print out whatever value my die rolled when I run the program. So I'll give it a run. We're going to watch the output window down here to see what kind of numbers it uh, actually generates. Now we're hoping to get numbers between 1 and 6. If we did our math right, uh, hopefully that's what we got. We got a 6, a 4, I'm just hitting this green arrow up here over and over just to see what values we get. Four, three, one. I'm looking for a two. I haven't got a two yet. There's a two. So it seems to be working the way we'd like. It creates a new die. And then uh, each time I run the program, it's going to roll the die. And the random number generator generates a random number between zero and five. We add one to that number to get the numbers one through six and uh, that's the number it prints out. So it looks like our first step in our quest to making a, a dice simulator is, is working well. Again, the code here for testing. Again, this is going to change a lot as we go through and add new features. In the next video, we actually create a set of dice uh, using these individual die, and then we change this test program to exercise that set of dice. So as, as our program changes, this is going to change a lot. Uh, and then here's the die class. I'll just scroll through it slowly so that you can see all the code in case you miss something. And there we go. Actual die class we can use in games and stuff. All right. Thanks for listening.